Has this ever happened to you? You're trying to watch your favorite My Little Pony episodes, but your monitor just don't, d just don't, don't do it. That's weak. Introducing... Repairing the cell CD Monchier for six minutes of your precious time. So yeah, this monitor, it's dead, or at least it appears to be. The light turns on green, but it doesn't seem to show any picture whatsoever. A friend of mine actually gave this to me to see if I could fix it. And while a completely dead monitor might seem difficult at first, my hunch is this is actually going to be really easy. Let me explain. LCD monitors tend to have backlights, and those backlights require a lot of power. Seriously, backlights are almost always the biggest power draw in any device that has one. And the high voltage circuitry that provides all that power, at least with monitors from this era, are very prone to failure as those old capacitors do capacitor things. And when that happens, the backlight inevitably fails, which I'm pretty sure is what's happening here. Imagine trying to play an old Game Boy, but instead of a reflective background, it was just all black. This thing was already hard enough to see. But we've had a lot of run-ins with bad capacitors on this channel, so it's no real surprise if there is yet another. Anyway, so that's my hunch. Dead LCD monitor where most of it actually works. Let's jump inside and see if I'm right. Now I'm not going to go into a lot of detail with the disassembly because every monitor is going to be different, but I will say most monitors, this one very much included, are held together by the bane of anyone who does repair. Plastic tabs. Just why? Funnily enough, this thing is loaded with screws on the back, but none of them actually hold the case together. They did attach the stand though, so we could finally remove that. Well, as for the tabs, it's nothing a little devilish rock and roll can't fix. By which I mean a guitar pick. I feel like I haven't played guitar in years, I just use picks exclusively to open things now. After some effort, a lot of effort, the front bezel finally popped off, and now I can see what all those screws on the back were for. They hold the panel in, which I now realize makes it lucky the front bezel popped off now rather than sometime earlier on. Alright, let's take the panel out. Okay, so I know I said that every monitor is going to be different, and that is true, but so far this does look like pretty much every other monitor I've ever opened. And yes, that includes the wires going everywhere and the tape holding things down. Yeah, it's pretty much how a lot of them are. Now we want to get to the electronics under this cage, and for the most part it's held on with simple screws, but some of this tape will also have to go. The tape was very stuck on, so much so that I had no concentration left to check the camera angle. So just pretend that you can see me unrouting the wires out of it. Some of the wires themselves were even really stuck in. Even with pliers I had to exert a ridiculous amount of force to get them out. Eventually I got enough wires unplugged so I could flip it over and look at the boards themselves. Specifically we want to look at the power board, and checking the ports it's pretty easy to see which board is which. We want to look at the top side of the power board, which means we're going to have to get it out. But that too turned out to be more complex than I expected. The boards are screwed into the cage, that's fine, but they're also attached to each other with these pin headers. I guess that was cheaper than a cable or something, but it looks like getting one out will necessitate getting both of them out. These nuts on the VGA and DVI ports also serve as screws fastening the video board in. Then somehow the video board came out on its own, but the power board was still stuck in with Something, I still don't really know, it's like the board was clicked into the cage somehow, but I never really figured out how. Anyways, yeah, for such a seemingly simple task, there was a surprising amount of confusion involved. Now we can finally get a good look, and look at that. Those capacitors are fucked. Okay, to be fair, they're not the worst I've ever seen, but damn, it's not hard to see why this thing isn't working properly. Let's go ahead and replace them. To do that, I'll need to write down all the values of each capacitor and go to the store to get ones that are the same or close enough. Generally, you can get away with capacitors that are higher voltages. You don't really want to go lower voltages or go for different capacitances unless you really know what you're doing. Since these are pretty standard values, most of the capacitors I got were the same. Some of them are higher voltages, but like I said, that shouldn't be a problem. As for the soldering approach, it is very low-fi. Just heat one leg, lift it up, heat the other leg, lift it up, this sounds a lot dirtier than I meant it to. Really, it's just desoldering. <laughs> After that, just use some soldering braid to open up the holes and stick it in. Oh god, this just got dirtier, didn't it? As he sensually inserted his hard capacitor legs into the hot, wet solder joint.
Well, I'm gonna pretend that didn't happen and look at that. The capacitors have all been replaced. You can also see in this clip I recorded earlier that the new capacitors are considerably smaller than the old ones. This is actually pretty common when you're replacing capacitors from older electronics. Just as technology's advanced, capacitors have gotten smaller. Now all that's left to do is test it. This of course meant putting a lot of it back together and much like taking it apart, this was easier said than done. But finally, it was all reconnected and we could test it. Luckily, I can keep the front bezel off because that part was the f***ing worst. All right, plugging it in and... Hey, there we go. This monitor is officially back from the dead. So hey, we're kind of done here. But before I button it up, I'm gonna give the plastics a good clean. You know how it is, when something goes unused for a long period of time, it tends to get a little dusty. Usually my go-to with plastics is just to run them under the tap, but this back piece has speakers that appear to be glued in, so I think I'll have to go with the old fashioned wipe down here. Alright, there we go! The repair really was that easy. In fact, if you're looking for an easy beginner soldering project and have a dead monitor lying around like this, I'd really recommend doing it. Now I can send this back to my friend and hope he gets some use out of it again. Or at the very least that it's a working monitor lying around rather than a dead one. Which is, you know, better, I'm sure. <laughs>